Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel over here and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So what we're going to be covering today's video is we're going to be looking at static equilibrium of rigid bodies and we are going to be finding the reactions for this problem shown on the screen. So what we have here is we have a frame that supports part of a roof of a small building. Knowing that the tension in the cable is 150 kilonewtons determine the reaction at the fixed N E. All right, so fixed N at E. What that tells us <clears throat> is that whenever you have a fixed N, you're gonna get three reactions. So we are going to get a horizontal, a vertical, and a moment reaction. So whenever you're doing reactions, you're just going to determine how many reactions you have at your reaction point, and then you're going to throw assumption arrows on those reactions. So you're just going to assume a direction for the reaction. If you get it wrong in the end, it's perfectly okay. It's just a negative answer. It just means that you assume the wrong direction. So with a fixed end cantilever, you're going to get three reactions. You're going to get one in the X direction, which we will just call E sub X, and we'll assume that to the right. You're going to get a vertical one, which we'll just assume in the upward direction. We'll call that EY. And the, with the fixed, you are going to get a moment reaction. You're going to get a rotation there at E. So we're going to assume that our moment reaction will be going counterclockwise, and we're just going to label that as EM. So X for horizontal, Y for vertical, and M for moment. So we are tasked with determining these three reactions. Now, remember, you can throw these assumption arrows on. I could have easily assumed EY down, EX to the left, vice versa, mix it up does not matter if you do the equations correctly and solve for them correctly. Um, if you get a positive answer in the end, that means you assume correctly. Negative means, well, you assume the wrong, just wrong direction. No big deal. And I'll show you what happens here. So last piece of information is that this cable is 150 kilonewtons. So what that means is this cable is pulling in tension at 150 kilonewtons in that general direction. You could easily have put it up here at point D in the same direction, but I'm just going to put it down here at point F because that's where it actually connects into the ground. So with this, what we're going to have to determine is the force or the dimension triangle for this cable because it's at an angle. It's not in the X or the Y direction. So we're going to have to determine the dimensions of the little slope here. So from D to F, we have 4.5 meters. And our vertical, which will be 2.5 or 2.25 plus 3.75, that gives us a total of six. And if you take um, 4.5 squared plus six squared, square root that, you end up with 7.5 here for the hypotenuse side of my dimension triangle. So we'll be using that trying to, or we'll be using these dimensions to get the 150 into the x into the y direction. So in solving for reactions, you will use summation of forces in the x have to be a total of zero. Summation of forces in the Y have to be totaled to zero. And moments about a point on your object have to sum to be zero as well. So typically, you will have to use all three equations in order to solve for all of your unknowns. So with a fixed condition, we will have one unknown in each direction if we do the moment equation correctly. We will have X, Y, and a moment value that we have to find utilizing these equations. So which one are we going to start with? Well, let's start with one of the easier ones. Let's start with the X. So we're going to assume everything to the right as positive, and all those X forces have to cancel and be zero. So all these 20 kilonewtons of forces are on the vertical. Don't include them. This is a moment. This is a vertical. Well, we have E sub X. We assumed it to the right, so it's positive. And then we have the 150. Well, the 150, since it's at an angle, if I can change colors here, the 150 will have a horizontal component and a vertical component. Because it's going down and to the right, our horizontal will be to the right and our vertical will be down. Well, that means that we're going to have plus 150 kilonewtons, and then we have to multiply it by a ratio to get it into the x-axis. This ratio will always have the hypotenuse side of the dimension triangle in the denominator, and it will have the side that is measuring in that direction in the numerator. So the 4.5 is measuring horizontally, and well, the X is horizontal, so we will include the 4.5 in the numerator there. And that's all we have for our X direction. So we can easily um, rearrange and solve. So E sub X 
is going to be a minus 150 times 4.5 over 7.5, which pops out to be a minus 90 kilonewtons. And we assumed E sub X to the right. Well, whenever you get a minus sign for your answer of your reactions, it doesn't mean that your reaction value is wrong necessarily. It just means that you assume the wrong direction at the start. So since this is negative 90, that means I assume the wrong direction. No big deal. So whenever this happens, just drop the minus sign and flip the arrow. So instead of it being negative 90 to the right, it's actually 90 kilonewtons to the left. So there's one of my reaction points. So if you want to, you don't have to, but you can come over here and throw on the correct arrow direction of to the left, and that's 90 kilonewtons. So there's one of my reactions, E sub X done, utilizing one of my equilibrium equations. Well, let's go ahead and use another one. Let's just go straight down here and we'll use Fy. So summing forces in the Y direction all have to cancel be zero. I'm gonna take up as my positive direction. So everything upward will be positive. Everything down will be negative inside of this equation. So, Let's see here, and, and just to go back to this negative sign, it does not mean that since it's negative, it's automatically to the left. This positive indicator here is only going to give you pluses and minus for your equation. Once you start solving for it, the negative sign, when it pops out, just means you assume the wrong direction. Do not correlate this minus sign with this positive direction up here. This positive direction is only for the pluses and minuses inside of the original equation. Okay, so. Fy. Well, we have Ey going upward, so it's positive. And then I have 20, 20, 20, 20, all going downward. So there's four of them. So four minus or minus four times 20 kilonewtons, because there's four of them. And then we have this vertical component of the 150. It's also pointed downward, so it's minus 150 kilonewtons. And we have to turn it into a y force once again divide by that dimension triangle's hypotenuse, and then multiply by the dimension that is parallel to the direction you're looking at or measuring in the direction you're looking at. The six is measuring vertically, so we will use the six in our y. And that's all we have there equal to zero. So we can rearrange everything here. So ey is essentially going to be four times 20 plus 150 times six over 7.5. And EY pops out to be a positive 200 kilonewtons, which just means I assumed the correct direction at the start, so it is in fact upward. Well, there is my second value, E sub Y. Only one more to go, which is my moment. So let me scroll down just a little bit here. All right. So next, let's do the moment equation. And typically when you're doing your moment equation, of course, you're always going to have to have a point you're summing about. Well, typically it's always best to just sum about the point that is your reaction when it's a fixed cantilever. This gets rid of the reactions you just found of. They drop out of the equation. So it'd be E sub X and E sub Y will not show up in my moment equation. And this also um, helps you just in case you screwed up these two reactions, they won't show up again in the moment equation. So just in case you mess them up somehow, you won't have a double mess up with them being in the moment equation. So always best sum about your reaction point of a fixed cantilever. So summing moments about E. Well, we have our uh, moment reaction at the fixed cantilever, which is EM. I assumed it counterclockwise, so it will be positive. And then I'm going to have my 20, 20, 20, and 20. All of those will be rotating counterclockwise about E, so they're all going to be positive, but each one's going to have a different distance. This first one is only 1.8 meters away from E. The second one is two times 1.8, which is 3.6. The third one is 5.4 meters away from E. And then the last one is finally 7.2 meters away from E. So we have to write all that out. And if you want to, you can take a shortcut and just say it's 20 times each of those distances, but just to show you the long way it's written out, this is how it would look. So plus the first 20 times its distance of 7.2, plus the second 20 times its distance of 5.4 meters, plus the next 20 
of its distance, which is 3.6 meters. And then finally, plus the last 20 here times its distance of 1.8 meters. Well, we're not done yet. We still have the 150 here. Now, since I placed the 150 right at F, and this is the reason why I did this, placing it right at F, the horizontal component does not include or does not go into our moment equation about E because it goes right through E. So the horizontal component of this has a zero perpendicular distance to E. So we're not going to include it. The vertical component does have a perpendicular, perpendicular distance to E. It's 4.5 meters away. So I do have to include that one. And if you look at the way it's rotating, it will be rotating clockwise about E. So that is minus based upon my positive sign convention. So I'm going to have a minus 150 kilonewtons times my ratio, which would be 6 over 7.5. And then I need that distance of 4.5 meters to get it over to E. And that is all I have for my moment equation. So let me scroll on down here. So my moments, my reactionary moment EM is the only thing that is inside of this equation that's unknown. So I can just rearrange and solve for it. Pretty simple. Just make sure that you double check that you're calculating everything correctly with your pluses and minuses. And when you do this, this moment reaction comes out to be 180 kilonewtons meters. So it came out to be a positive number. So that means my assumed arrow direction of counterclockwise was the correct way. So keep in mind that when you have reactions, you always have to throw arrow directions on them. And that is my final answer. And that's how you would solve for each of the reactions for this particular problem. Now, with reactions, there's always a way to check your answers if you want to do that. For this particular problem, I'm not going to show the check here, but what you can do is that you can sum forces at F. So summing moments about F. So this would include your reactions and these four 20s here. It would not include your cable force here if you're taking it right at F. And in doing so, you should get your moment equation to sum to be zero. So there's always a way to double check your answers with these reactions just by summing moments in a different point. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel as we're trying to upload daily. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.